You're not bad at math. You just need to master these techniques and put them into practice. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the 15 proven techniques that you can start implementing to get a perfect score on the SAT math section. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Nellis. I am a college admissions coach, a Stanford alum, and the founder of NextGen Admit. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and subscribe to my channel because I am constantly making really strategy-packed college application videos. But but today we are focusing on the SAT. Now, the strategies in this video were actually provided by an SAT and ACT expert, Stephen Menking. He's been doing this stuff for a long time and has really amazing comprehensive programs that have helped students raise their SAT score by up to 500 points. I am so happy that he provided this information for me to share with you guys today. I know it's gonna be super helpful for you, especially because as I was looking at these techniques, I was like, oh wait, this is actually actually exactly what I did to score a 790 on the SAT math section. I only missed one question on the SAT math section and I'm still a little <sighs> about that. So these techniques are the real deal. Plus, if you're looking for even more support and a step-by-step -step comprehensive program that fully breaks down the SAT techniques for all sections of the test, then I would really recommend checking out Manking Tutoring's SAT and ACT courses. I've linked it in the description below, so make sure to go and check that out. And now without further ado, let's get into the SAT math techniques. First, it's good to understand what you even expect on the SAT math section. So this is what's gonna be covered linear equations and systems, ratios, proportions, and percentages, quadratics and polynomial expressions, geometry that is mostly coordinate-based, data analysis like graphs, tables, and statistics, and a few advanced topics like functions and trigonometry. Also, because the SAT is now in the digital format, you get Desmos. Desmos is an online calculator that is built into the math section of the test, which is such a game changer. Oh my gosh, I remember when I discovered Desmos in seventh grade and I fell in love. Am I exposing myself as a math nerd? I was, okay. Technique number one, use Desmos strategically. There is no extra credit if you solve a math problem algebraically, if you could just do it faster visually with Desmos. So if you're faced with a system of equations or a weird expression, plug it into Desmos. You can graph equations and find intersections. You can solve quadratics without having to factor and you can test equivalent expressions. It's really nice because Desmos gives you this like positive confirmation by seeing things visually so that it boosts your confidence throughout the test. So make sure to practice Desmos so it becomes second nature when you take the test. Technique number two, master the art of back solving. So if the question gives you multiple answer choices, often if they are numbers, then don't solve the problem forwards, solve it backwards. So you can pick an answer, let's say start with answer C, plug it into the equation and see if it works. This technique works great for word problems, equations with variables on both sides, and problems where setting up an equation feels confusing. This will save you a lot of time. Technique number three, identify the actual question. Look guys, the SAT loves to mislead students who rush, so don't rush through it. So here's an example. Let's say a question asks, if X equals two Y minus four, and y equals six, what is the value of x plus y? A lot of students here might just plug in y and solve for x, but the question is asking about x plus y. So once you figure out what x is, you need to add together x and y, and that is your answer. So always, always circle or underline in the question what it is actually asking you to do. And do this before you start writing or solving anything. Technique number four, Plug in your own variables. Some SAT questions will present equations using variables with no real numbers. Instead of solving everything symbolically, cause that can get quite confusing, try plugging in your own values. So for example, if a problem says, if A equals 2B and B equals 3C, what is the value of A in terms of C? You can pick a value. Let's say we make C equal one, and then we solve it forward. So then B equals three, 
a equals six, and that makes a equal six C. This is especially helpful on proportion or ratio problems, where plugging in your own real numbers will help simplify the mental load. Technique number five is to master the high frequency math concepts. So the SAT doesn't test every math concept equally. There are certain concepts that show up a lot more than the others. So you wanna prioritize those topics that appear most often. And that includes linear equations and systems, quadratic equations, ratios and proportions, exponents and radicals, and word problems including percent change and growth. Have you guys ever heard of the 80-20 rule? Basically, you wanna focus 80% of your effort on the 20% of tasks that are going to yield the most results. So in this case, you wanna focus most of your effort in studying on those top question types. Technique number six, label diagrams and draw your own. Whenever you see a geometry problem or a word problem with a visual element, you want to draw and label. Even if they already give you a diagram, you want to annotate it with the known values and angles. Now, if you don't have a diagram, draw your own. This will help you better understand the relationships and avoid misreading the question. And it becomes a lot easier to spot opportunities where you can take shortcuts. Technique number seven, watch for units, conversions, and scale. The SAT loves to test your attention to detail. You wanna be really careful and extra mindful of different units like inches versus feet minutes versus hours, and multipliers in maps or scale drawings. So always, always, always double check your units before selecting an answer. One missed label can cost you an easy point. Technique number eight, start with what you know. On any hard problem, you wanna start by writing down the information that you are 100% sure about. By taking that first step, it will often trigger the next steps that you should take to get to the solution. This is especially helpful when you look at a question and you don't immediately see how you're gonna solve it, or the question looks really intimidating or unfamiliar. You gotta first identify what you are completely certain about, and then use that foundation to build upon and find the answer. Technique number nine, skip and return. Don't let one one tricky problem eat up five minutes of your time. You don't have much time on the SAT math section, so you gotta be moving quickly. So if you're still stuck on a problem, you've been solving it over and over and over, it's been 45 seconds or 60 seconds, it is time to move on. This doesn't mean ignore it and not answer the question because you definitely want to answer every single question on the test to make sure you even have a shot at getting it right. But what you wanna do in this case is mark it and move on so you know to come back to it at the end of the test. Oftentimes what will happen is that after answering other questions and solving other problems, when you come back to that question, you will have a clearer mind and it might be easier for you to identify the answer. Technique number 10, know when to estimate versus solve precisely. Here's the rule of thumb. When your answer choices are really spread out, for example, you have 10, 50, 90, 130. In that case where the answers are spread out, it's good to use estimation. But when the answer choices are closer together, for example, 61, 62, 65, 67, you wanna solve precisely to make sure that you are getting the exact answer. Technique number 11 is practice mental math daily. This is gonna save you a lot of time. You don't wanna always rely on your calculator for very basic math. So make sure to practice your multiplication tables, have that memorized, squaring numbers under 20, estimating 10% or 25%, and working with some of those simpler fractions. This is gonna save you so much time because your brain is just automatically gonna know how to solve these little things and you're not wasting time punching it into a calculator or manually solving it. Technique number 12, double check your last step. Oftentimes in multi-step problems, it's so easy to make careless errors. So I want you to always pause and ask yourself, did I answer the right question, the question that it was asking? Did I plug the values back in correctly? And could you use Desmos to verify your work? Checking your final step can really save you from making very careless errors. Technique number 13, get familiar with tricky word problems. A lot of students get really scared of these word problems, but they often follow the same patterns. So you wanna break them down and figure out what it is. Highlight the numbers and the units. Write short variable definitions like A equals two B minus six and translate the problem piece by piece. So once you decode the setup of the problem, you're already halfway there. It becomes a lot easier from there to figure out 
what you actually need to do to solve the problem. Technique number 14, build your calculator reflexes. We've been talking about the Desmos calculator, but it's important to understand how to use some of its cool features to help you out on test day. So make sure you know how to use it to graph quickly, adjust the zoom so that you can see the intersections, and how to spot X and Y values at specific points. You should be just as comfortable using Desmos as you are using your pencil. And technique number 15, drill your timing and your accuracy with real tests. You wanna make sure that you are doing plenty of practice problems and practice tests. But more importantly, when you take these tests, you need to simulate the real test taking conditions. Make sure you use the official digital SAT practice tests. You put away all distractions and you set a timer. Now, of course, also after you finish taking a practice test, you must review your answers and specifically the ones that you got wrong and actually figure out why did I get this question wrong? What do I need to learn from this? I really recommend creating your own set of notes to write down and explain the concept to yourself and write examples. So it's no longer automatic for you to make the same mistake again. This is something I actually did that significantly improved my SAT score because I took the time to really sit down and think about it and understand the concept completely. And this is so much more effective than just taking a practice test and then being like, well, that's the score that I got. I'll just take another practice test and see if it gets better. It's not gonna get better unless you do the work to make it better. So those are 15 SAT math techniques that you can start implementing now to significantly raise your score. I really love how smart these techniques are because it is designed to optimize your time and help you get to the right answer as fast as possible. So I wanna thank Stephen Menking for providing these techniques. And again, he goes so much more in depth and really teaches you and shows you with real examples in his SAT and ACT programs. So if you are interested in any of those, you gotta check out the link in the description. He does in-depth content review, the techniques that you need for every single section of the test. He gives customized practice test reports with feedback that you can directly implement to raise your score. And what I really like is that in addition to focusing on the technical strategy, he also approaches the whole process with the competitive SAT mindset that you need to succeed. Mindset is so important because your thoughts control your reality. So applying this to the SAT is so relevant and it's gonna help you achieve your goal score so much faster than if you were just taking a million practice tests on your own. So check out his resources below. I also got some fun and free stuff in the description for you guys. And I hope these 15 techniques were helpful. Let me know what you learned, if it changed the way you thought about how you go and approach the test. And I hope to see you again for another really helpful SAT or college admissions video. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You're gonna kill it, okay? You got this. Don't second guess yourself. All right, love you.